Right, so I've had a number of requests for the um, the Class 92 tutorial, so I thought we'd do that. Um, I'm going to shut the map software down now, because uh, then I can drive it with the keyboard, and you can see see me driving it the way that you would drive it. Um, so this scenario is slightly bizarre, I will say that now. This is a test scenario that I have written, which is nonsense. Um, this is the uh, this is the London Faversham route, and I've set it up on the um, uh, on the third rail section because this loco is dual powered, a bit like the javelin is. So we're over at Who Junction, and what I wanted to do was to sort of show you getting the loco moving in the same same process, whether it's overhead or third rail. And then when we get to Ebbsfleet, and I know a 92 never ever does this, so uh, but that's fine, uh, we're going to switch over to overhead while we're driving and then carry on and get overhead power. Uh, and you'll see the TVM430 signalling um, in, uh, um, in the mix. So, let me first show you how you get this thing going, because um, it's a little bit uh, tricky to get going. So from the cab, uh, we can see we've got the TVM uh, gauges uh, readouts here. We've got some of the stuff relating to the power system here. This is cruise control uh, or speed set. We'll check that out in a minute. These gauges, I'll show you as we go along, they tell you whether or not you're um, applying a power or not. So you can see how much power you're applying. Down here is where we're going to start. This is what power we're on at the moment. So you've got this little four-way selector and at the moment it's set for BRAC so that would be uh, overhead power. Now the pantograph is down at the moment but if I click the pantograph up that's what it will do. We're on third rail so we want BRDC. When we get to the um, uh, uh, the, the high, high speed line HS1 then we'll switch it to BRCTRL but for now we want BRDC so get hold and move it to BRDC um, now we need to um, drop the shoes by doing that. That will also raise the pantograph if necessary. This little red button in the middle is VCB, VCB close, the circuit breaker close. So if you press that, that will close the circuit breaker, which is like um, when you press the button twice on the javelin. Um, now we're going to put it into forwards uh, gear, or forwards um, reverser. Acknowledge that with the Q key. That's the AWS self-test. Uh, we're going to release the brakes. Uh, and then we're going to get going. So as you can see, we're now operational. So that's basically that sequence you want to do. You want to select the power, enable, uh, select the power type, um, raise the pantograph or drop the shoe as required, do VCB close, forwards, release the brakes, and then apply power. If you still have... Um, brakes on the power will not do anything so let's get moving we've got a bit of a journey ahead of us um, to get to uh, Ebb's fleet fringe styling does this loco have neutral section functionality it does not have neutral section functionality uh, this loco um, is built with um, third rail and overhead high speed one TVM 430 and uh, UK signaling but it doesn't have the neutral section functionality. I think it came out quite a way before neutral section stuff uh, was done so we're speeding up a bit now. So um, what I'm also going to show you is the uh, braking system. So the braking system is the same as the Class 66. So if you remember the um, uh, the Class 66, so that's a space bar just for your horn. Um, if you, um, it's a PBL braking system. So you see that. So if we look at the PBL brakes, you'll see it looks just like on a uh, a Class 66. I apply, release apply, release, and you know, you'll remember you're driving the outer needle and the inner needle follows it. So let's get some power on. So that's all there is to the braking. If you want to see more about the braking system then I would strongly recommend you go and have a look at the uh, the DRS Class 66 how-to that I did um, the other day because that's got a lot more detail on there. Frisco wants the horn. Right, so we're speeding up a bit now. Um, now, this loco also has a function called boost. So if you watch the ammeter at 145, if I click boost, then the ammeter goes up a little bit. That means we're applying a bit more power and we get a bit more acceleration out of it. The other thing to note is that at the moment, our speedometer, which is here, so it's a bit of an unusual speedometer, is reading miles per hour. As and when we switch into um, TVM430, it will switch to KMH.
which will give us the uh, kilometres per hour reading that you need to be actually be able to obey the TVM430 correctly. So over here we've got our power meter that we're applying. So if I drop the uh, the power, you see that the uh, power goes down. If I start applying um, the um, dynamic brake, oh, apparently it doesn't have a dynamic brake. Okay, uh, it's done via the uh, train brake. Okay, never mind. Um, so this tells you the uh, what your, uh, your your power you're applying, and it's more useful when you're doing on cruise control. So let's say we so if you get hold of this and just move it down, it will move the cruise control target speed. Uh, let's set it to 50, and if I now put power on, it will accelerate up to 50 and then stop. So it's like a speed limiter. And um, with any kind of cruise control, um, you do need to be. Um, watching than driving the loco. You are still in charge of the loco. That was an advance warning for the drop from 70 to 50. Right, you can see now that the only target power has actually gone out. Yeah, because we're set to 50, it's now managing the power gently and just keeping us at around 50. If I was to now make that 55, the power would then start climbing again and it will uh, it'll start boosting us up to 55. I don't want 55, I want 50. You can also see the brake applying a little bit. Right, so we're now cruising around the... Um, um, <clears throat> we're coming up on... Uh, I can't remember the name of the place. <laughs> there it is. Gravesend! That's it. I know it began with a G. So coming up on Gravesend, so <coughs> I've covered the... Uh, that's the DRA, um, sorry, DSD, sorry, not DRA, I'm talking rubbish, that's the DSD uh, alarm. If you don't touch the controls, you get that two-tone alarm, which you just need to acknowledge with the Q key. Um, AWS again, because of the drop in speed, because we're going to 30. So let's just move it up to 30. And then the brakes will apply and we'll get dropped down to 30 miles an hour. I left that way too late, but never mind. There you go. I think I just clipped it. Drivers Reminders thing, DRT, there you go. So we're going through um, Gravesend now. Once we get through Gravesend, we can speed back up again. So you've got normal complement of um, headlights and so forth. So press the H key, you've got uh, your daytime lights, uh, sorry, nighttime lights in this case, that's the light there. Uh, you've got marker lights only, and you've got daytime lights. Um, up here, is it the brakes on? Yeah, the brakes have gone on. Because the DIS, DSD went off while I was out of the cab. This is definitely a loco you need to drive from inside the cab because of that um, that, D, uh, that alarm. Wait for it to stop and then we can get moving again. We don't have to do anything fancy other than wait for it to stop. Once you've waited for it to stop, you then need to apply, move the brakes to release. That's it, the brakes are off, and then we can start applying power again. So there's no special steps that you need to do in order to recover from um, that alarm. Let's put the speed set back on. We're still in a 30 limit after all. Uh, the wagons I'm hauling are the Mega Fret wagons. I believe they come in the pack with the 90. I'll show you those in just a moment. Uh, this is the main PBL brake lever, so you can operate the brake if you want to. And then this is the uh, Loco brake lever. Which works exactly the same as the 66. So we're still going 30. Let's have a look up here. And... To, to tip. So here we've got uh, some uh, interesting buttons. We've got the cab light, 
you've got uh, the uh, upper headlight. Right, so let's have a look out the front. You see this light here. When I turn the lights on, nothing's going on at the top. Um, so if we now um, press the upper headlight and go outside, you can see this light is now on. So that's how you get that light independently controlled. And then similarly, tail lights you can independently control as well. So that's the, uh, the tail lights. Um, instrument lights. And uh, I think that's it, actually. Yeah. You've also got a uh, proving panel up here for your main lights. So that's your, uh, your different types of lights up there. Right, so let's get this up to... 70 power is now going on so that's really the lights and switches hey mad mikey one two three thank you for the follow much appreciated So that uh, approach control is because we're getting close to Ebb's fleet now. Now the process when we want to do the power changeover is simply swing this round to CTRL and re-engage the power, uh, having done the circuit breaker, and that's it. There's not a lot more to it than that, but what I am going to do now is clear off the uh, cruise control. We don't need cruise control making a mess of things for us. We're coming into a 50 through the station. I should say, once again, this is not a realistic journey for this loco. This just allowed me to show you normal signalling AWS and TVM 430 and um, power changeovers and all sorts of things that you can do with this loco all in a short time. So as we come here, we've already got the, the mixture of overhead and third rail. So we can go ahead, flip that round to um, the CTRL and um, enable the power and do the circuit breaker. Now when we apply power, we're now under power from the, you can see the ammeters now reading information, so we're now under power from overhead wires. So just one more time on that one. Uh, actually you'll also see any minute, just watch this bit, as we come into uh, out of normal signalling territory TVM430 will wake up. There you go, so we're now in an 80 km hour restriction and indeed we've now got kilometres per hour reporting on the speedometer. So it's just waiting, we'll just manage our speed down this uh, this grade here. Ever so gently. Emperor 62, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. Moggy says, would that work on BRAC as well? Absolutely, you can change over power, it's just that I've only got CTRL and third rail to, uh, that I can choose from at the moment. Right, we've been given up to 100. Trying to clear the DR, um, DR. I don't know why I want to call it DRA all the time. It's a DSD. Get your TLAs in the right place, Matt. Right, I'm going to call it old age senility. And I'm going to blow the horn. Right, so one other thing that's different with the uh, with this compared to the Javelin is once we go past this light, you'll see we get the maximum speed limit for the line applied. Maybe it's at the next one then. <laughs> um, shortly we'll get the maximum limit for the line applied, uh, which doesn't look the same. So on, um, there you go. So you get three green lights, which telling tells you you're ready to you're uh, you, you're clear for the maximum line limit. Bear in mind this loco is able to work on HS1 and um, the rest of the the line. So it's uh, it's just uh, coping with that. Right. So we put maximum power on. And again, you can see the uh, speedometer down the bottom there, registering our acceleration, 120 kilometers an hour. Bear in mind that the HUD doesn't change. The HUD never changes, even on the, uh, the Javelin. It always reads miles per hour, because that's what the route is, fundamentally. So yes, down here, if we turn the cab light on, which doesn't really help too much. Okay, let's wait until we get out of the... Uh, out of the mist, this mess, the tunnel, to the QE2 bridge.
nearly there. We are at this tunnel in a moment. D R I A. Oh, D S D again. Um, right, so yeah, um, just to repeat that process, it won't work for us now because we're in the wrong place. We're actually, uh, I won't, well, I'll wait until we're not on a hill. That'll probably be a good idea. Um, so if I was uh, going into third rail at the moment, um, then the steps are to move this controller to the power system you want, so BRDC's third rail, then re-enable the power system, and then um, uh, do the VCB close, that's the circuit breaker. Are we over this hill yet? Nearly. I'm not going to take this scenario too much further because it just goes the wrong way. Right, so now if I now cut the power, if you switch this over to uh, there, switch it to third rail, and then do the circuit breaker, that's it, you're now on um, third rail, which obviously won't help us at the moment. So if we swing it back to CTRL, um, and you'll notice it changed back to KMH. So if we switch it to BR, uh, it goes MPH, and then switch it back to uh, BR CTRL, switch it to power, do the circuit breaker, and we're now getting power again. That is basically the um, the, nu the, 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 the nuts and bolts of this particular loco. It's uh, um, you've got um, the braking system here, the horn over there. Don't forget, you've also got the power booster if you need a power boost for some reason. AWS acknowledge. You've got your cruise control. This tells you whether you're applying power or not. When you especially useful when you're using cruise control. Um, and uh, this is your TVM signaling system. So, it's the train. Let's put some lights on. And what I'm going to do is stop the train in a moment. So, um, the scenarios for this particular loco come for, um, I think it's West Coast Mainline and that's a uh, an overhead route so when you're firing up you're going to want to put it on the BRAC and then do the power and then do the circuit breaker the process is essentially the same so I've just got a bit of braking applied and then we are slowing down quite gently DSD got it right So you're just coming to a stop, because the scenario doesn't really go any further than that. Once someone wants to look at the wagons, these are the wagons. These are mega fret wagons. So that's a look at the wagons that come in the pack. Okay, so I think that basically covers off this tutorial for the Class 92. Again, as always, if there's anything you think I've missed that you'd want to see covered, let me know and I can always revisit it. Alright, thanks very much everyone. Let's move on now back to a scenario. GWR wanted it to crash. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right, back to changing route uh, and I will change us to a new scenario.